All right, so check it out. It didn't take very long to grind all that meat. Um, I would say an hour, and that's with cleaning and everything, right? So that uh, grinder is a beast, man. I like it a lot. Um, just got done grinding. I just got done cleaning. Got to stay clean and sanitized when you're doing this kind of thing. So uh, let's check out how much yield that um, that gave me right I don't know how many pounds of meat this was uh, this is like a three quart crock pot that's basically completely full um, I believe that this is a gallon pot that's completely full that's a gallon pot this might be 1.5 this is a little bit bigger than this and I know this is a four quart right here so this is probably six to eight quart um, but that's how much meat that I grinded today um, I'm about to run to Ingalls and pick up some pork, and I will grind the pork, and then I will, uh, I think I'm going to get a scale today, so I can portion out like one pound of meats, um, and I plan on doing like 90-10 ratio for my burgers, and then for my sausage, I like it fatty, so anywhere between 80-20 uh, and 70-30 um, for the sausage, so that's seven parts venison three parts um pork fat and the same with the burgers you know 90 10 nine parts venison one part um pork fat that's just to bind it and keep it together um this i know that um pretty good looking meat here uh, venison is very soft meat so the more you grind it the mushier it gets so I'll, um I don't want to mess with it too much, um, but I do want to run the venison and the pork through the grinder together to help mix it better versus using my hand. Um, I used my hand last time. It didn't, I mean, it worked out pretty good. It just wasn't incorporated, you know, through the meat evenly, uh, but it still was absolutely delicious, right? So, uh, two and a half, I'd say between these two are three gallons and, uh, See, was that a three quart crock pot? I can't remember. I think this was not a three quart. I think this was either a six or eight quart um, crock pot here. So let's just go with two gallons, you know, between the two of these three. So I got about five gallons, I guess, if you were thinking about it liquid wise. Um, I don't know what the pounds come out to be with that. The I know that in liquid. Uh, a gallon of water is eight pounds, but that's liquid weight, not, you know, liquid weight. So, um, I don't know. I'm guessing just by picking it up, that's probably five, closer to ten. I, I, I know I have about 20 to 25 pounds of meat here. I mean, uh, I'll find out once I get it all portioned out exactly. Yeah, anyways. Um, we do have some venison steaks I'm going to cook tonight. And then um, also while we were um, getting this processed, I last night started some bones. And um, I do bones for my dogs. So I picked them pretty clean. Um, they're not going to be, you know, very meaty. Um, I'd like to leave a little bit of meat on there next time, I guess, you know, for the dogs. But... It's a good way to utilize your bones. You can also cook them down like this and then um, keep them for soups, you know. I cut them in half, use the bone marrow, uh, but I wanted to get them a little crispy on the outside even before if I used any of them for broths or soups or anything like that, stews. Uh, but um, these are my dog bones. They love these things. I did them last year. And um, I decided to keep every bone that I could, um, you know, the big bones anyway, you know, you don't want to do ribs and stuff like that. Um, you still want to watch them, though, uh, because, I mean, if you have a heavy eater, then, I mean, these bones are a little brittle, especially once you cook them. Um, it's not like chicken bones where it splits, you know, and causes problems for dogs, but... You just want to keep an eye on them, you know, if you decide to ever do this uh, for your dogs. Uh, just to keep an eye on them if they're really heavy chewers, you know. But uh, my dogs didn't have a problem with them. There's some pretty good meat on that one still. Charlie's going to love that. 
Uh, but these bones, man, when you buy them, they are expensive. Uh, $20 a bone or so, probably a little bit more now. That was last year's price. I looked at venison bones for dogs. Um, they're really expensive. So if you do the math, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, I got $200 worth of bones right here. And I simply processed them for free. I did it myself. So, um, they are look, they look pretty good. I wouldn't mind chewing on them myself. So I cooked them at a really low temperature. Um, you don't want to cook at a high. We got something gnarly hanging off here. I'll probably turn that off before I give it to my dog. That's the kind of thing you want to worry about here. You know, uh, that wouldn't be very good. Um, it's not a bone per se, but it, it might be. Um, and uh, my dog ain't going to process that. So I'll cut this little bit off here. It might be a tendon, you know, who knows. But I still, I worry about things like that. Uh, but these look pretty good, man. Um, I'm happy with the results. I cooked them at uh, 170 degrees last night for a good while. I would probably say, oh, uh, I put them in about 4 or 5 o'clock and I cooked them until I went to bed, which was about 10. And then I finished them today for about another hour and a half or so. Really low temp because I did not want the bones to split, you know, um, and break down so badly that it would be dangerous for your dogs. But um, that is pretty cool, man. Uh, the dogs love that special treat. And uh, last time I did it, my dog would not give it away. I mean, he chewed on it for a while, and um, he's a heavy, heavy chewer, and he was, it was difficult to get it away from him, so I know how much they love it, uh, but it's worth it, and you're, you're utilizing another part of a deer that people just disregard, you know, throw away, so bones, man, keep them, cook them on low temps, I'm gonna wrap them in ceram wrap um, in a brown paper, and then... Well, probably not these. I will my burgers. You know, these I have a, uh, it's not like a vacuum sealed. It basically is a vacuum sealed, um, you know, packaging. So I will put it in a bag, suck out the air out and seal it. And this will be perfectly to keep in storage, um, you know, and give to my dogs when they want them. But uh, the main thing was the burger, the, the venison, ground venison here. That's a good bit. And uh, again, like I said, I'm going to go to the Ingalls Market, local store, grocery store. A lot of times if you need any fat, you just ask the butcher, man. You know, if you're going to have any pork fat the next day, you know, they do pork chops and all kinds of things. They usually just throw that fat away so you get that fat for free. You don't have to pay for it. So call your local grocery store if they have a meat department that butchers meat there. Just ask them ahead, you know, a day in advance. Can I get some pork fat? And they put it aside, and uh, I'm going to go pick that up today. And as soon as I get back, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix my burger, or venison, ground venison with uh, the pork and make ground meats for burgers. And then I will do some of this for breakfast sausages. I made a recipe last year. Um, I will go over that when I make the sausage. And um, we'll see you in a little bit.